bilang tinigil ang pagsugpong ng ating alien legalization program dahil hindi sila nilapitan ng mga inject. Gusto nila na bago nila ipairal itong alien legalization program ay makikipag-negotiate sila under the table with the Chinese. That is the real reason. Ay, 2 billion na yung nakitain sana ng alien legalization program na punta na sana sa earthquake victims natin at sa iba pang mga servisyo publiko ng ating gobyerno. For, in the three months that it was in effect, the program earned 90 million pesos for our government. Yung pera nyo napunta sana sa akin kung ginusto ko lang. At wala sana nakakaalam na yung pera ng kalaking ganyang halaga ay napunta sa akin because remember, I am a UP honor graduate. <laughs> So they passed the resolution to suspend it. So, as the principal architect of the program, I, out of delicadeza, I offered to resign. The president rejected the resignation. For the second time, I again offered to resign during my confirmation hearings as Secretary of Agrarian Reform, when the Commission on Appointments not only refused to scrutinize my qualifications, in fact humiliated me by turning my confirmation hearings into a platform for airing all manner of lies and artificial anomalies and scandals against me and my family. Sabi nila, kurap daw ako. Walang naniwala, kaya pati asawa ko sinagpina nila dahil kurap rin raw. Paano maging kurap siya? UP graduate din siya. <laughs> At hindi pa sila contento doon, pati nanay ko, who is already 67 years old, a widow who lives alone in our old house in Iloilo City, who takes in lodger so that she can support herself, has never in any manner, shape, or form participated or intervened in my governmental functions. They wanted to subpoena my mother so that they could cross-examine her on the alleged ground that because my biodata is so impressive and I did so well in UP, it must necessarily show a biologically genetic defect in the family. In other words, that insanity runs in my family. Nagtangka silang ilagay to plan stories in the media that I had been confined in a mental institution. A charge which has absolutely no relation to reality and which defies the mandate that it's a sin to tell a lie. I am looking you in the eye. I am telling you I have never been confined in a mental institution or any institution for mental health. But, going along with this scenario of my enemies, assuming that I was confined, in an institution, whatever it may have been. Wherever it was that I went, I strongly proposed that the senators and the congressmen should go there also, for it might help to improve their performance in the Congress. Hindi ko tama yan. Bakit sabihin ng mga kalaban kong, because I continually resign, I should now have my resignation accepted. Nung resign ako ng resign sa gobyerno, ayaw ng ayaw ng Pangulo. And I obeyed her when she ordered me to stay in place. Pero kapo, ngayon gusto na ninyong tanggapin ang resignation ko because I'm a UP law graduate, ayaw ko nang mag-resign. <laughs> so the president had to offer me another explanation on why I had to be removed from government. Sabi niya, ang isa na paninira ng mga kalaban ko is that my achievement reports in the CID and in the TAR were allegedly based on what they call manipulated statistics. Minani obra kurao yung statistics ko so that I would sound as if I had achieved grandiose projects in office when it was not necessarily a reflection of the truth. Paano po magagawa yan when the achievement report of the Secretary of Agrarian Reform is nothing but a collation of the 13 separate achievement reports of our regional directors in the 13 regions throughout the country? And my enemies never realized that when I, they attempted to frame me up with this accusation that I was telling a lie to the Filipino people, they were accusing not only me, but all the 15,000 employees of the TAR of confabulating in a conspiracy of falsehood against the Filipino people. That is simply not true. Unlike my enemies, I do not tell a lie. Sa galit ko, na naniniwala pala si Pangulong Aquinong kaya kung magsinungalin, Napaliwanag po tuloy kung bakit lumabas ako sa dyaryo na nakabating suit lang ako. <laughs> okay, details. Immediately after I was kicked out details. of the Aquino cabinet, a major Manila newspaper published a full-page interview with me 
accompanied by a big photograph of myself wearing nothing but a bathing suit. I want to tell you, particularly my sisters in the Portia sorority, for I was a member of this sorority when I was a student here, that that picture was used without my knowledge and much less with my consent. The photographer asked for permission to take pictures of me when I was indulging in my favorite marine hobby, which is swimming. So I requested him categorically to take the pictures only while I was swimming in the water, precisely to avoid trivializing my public office. So pursuant to our agreement, we went to a swimming pool. I jumped into the water. I performed all the tricks that he ordered me to do. <laughs> exactly as if I were a trained dolphin. But the picture he used was the one that was taken after the entire proceedings had been terminated and I was already on land. Even so, I am always a great friend and supporter of the free press. And so I made no protest. I charged it all to journalistic freedom. At tako nga, mabuti na nga yung nakita ng taong bayan yung trato kong yun, maski ganyang maraming masakit na pananalita ang inabot ko doon. Dahil dyan, makikita ng taong bayan na pag sinabi ko ang vital statistics ko, totoo. <laughs> Finally, the president reached the last two but main reasons for my removal from office. One, she said when I asked for evidence, she said her evidence consisted of about three lists separately given to her after the last coup d'etat attempt. These were the lists of the people who were supposed to become members of the civilian junta to lead and run the country if she was deposed and government power was transferred to those who authored the coup d'etat. Sabi ng Pangulo, Bawat listahan, Miriam, palaging una ang pangalan mo. Gusto ko nang sagutin, eh natural dahil taga-Yupi ako. <laughs> Sino pagtatakbo ng gobyerno o ni mga taga-Yupi? But I kept my peace. Because I was outraged, my sense of justice was violated. That my president could be led to believe that a list which has absolutely no indication or any proof of my participation or even with my knowledge or prior approval could be used as so-called evidence of my alleged treason against her. Hindi ba maliwanag na yung mga listahan na yan ay ginawa sa dyan lang para siraan ako? Na hindi naman ako tinanong kung payag ako o hindi na ilagay yung pangalan ko doon. Dahil kung tanungin nila ako, siguradong sasabihin kong ayaw ko. Dahil hindi ko ugali na makikipagsabwat o makikipagtraidor sa aking Pangulo. Alam naman ng taong bayan ang mapagkalaban ako, sinasabi ko ng tapatan para we could exchange in a public debate and before the bar of public opinion, the Filipino constituency can determine for themselves who I or my enemy is telling the truth. Hindi ko style yan na makikipagsabwat sa mga espya o sa mga traidor. Ang style ko, pag may kalaban ako, hinahamon ko ng suntukan. <laughs> eh hindi ko sinasabi. Sinasabi nila ngayon, sobra daw ang yabang ko. Na lahat na raw ng tao, kinalaban ko. Walang taong disente yung gustong maglaban ng kapwa niya. Walang taong may hili na palagi siyang kontrobersyal o palagi siyang may kalabang pinapapatay pa siya o kaya yung anak niya. Pero, sana'y maintindihan ninyo na kung ganyang nagtatapangan ako, yan ay dahilan sa, sa ating gobyerno nung ako'y nandu doon, nakapaligid ako ng mga tumisan. Kung nakapaligid ba ako ng mga fellow alumni ko dito sa UP, or the other youth of our land in the various campuses of our archipelago, I promise to behave in a civilized manner. Hindi raw ako. <clears throat> Dapat manatili sa gobyerno dahil wala akong pakikisama. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng pakikisama sa ating gobyerno? Help me to analyze what our politicians mean by the value of pakikisama in our political system. Ang ibig, ang ibig ko sabihin ng pakikisama ay na kung may pagkamali ako sa gobyerno, ituruan nila ako in a spirit of constructive criticism at susundin ko ang sinasabi nila dahil nakakatanda sila at mas marunong sila sa akin. Pero ang ibig pala nila sabihin ng pakikisama ay ganito. Pag may pakante sa CID at meron akong aplikante na honor graduate o kaya bata, gusto kong mag-hire o mag-employ ng mga bata dahil may idealismo sila lalo na kung honor student. Maski wala siyang letter of recommendation sa isang makapangyarihang politiko, 
Yun ang taong gusto ko sanang ilagay sa ating gobyerno. Pero pag may bakanting ganyan, ay eh, biro mo, mismong senador o kongresista ay pupunta sa CID office na napakaliit na office.